Hello cousins near and far, and welcome to my channel, Ancestral Spotlight. If you would be so kind as to subscribe to my channel, I would be very grateful for your support. Our topic for today are the children of Thomas Bullman Bard and Mary Catherine Smith, proudly coming to you with sources. That's correct, there's that S word. And I'd like to point out the astounding lack of in family trees today. A fact is meaningless if it cannot be proven. So please, ladies and gentlemen, slow down your clicking fingers, review those hints, root out the original sources of the information you're putting into your tree, and actually put that source into your tree. Your future self will thank you, as will future generations and other researchers, and it makes you look good. With that said, let's take a look at a secondary source for the Bard family a physical book which can also be found free online in PDF form called Bard and Beard Families, a genealogical, biographical, and historical collection of data, written by Fermin Bard Catchings and published in 1819 by Bard Ward Publishers out of Nashville, Tennessee. Down on page 175, you'll see the fourth generation header, and you'll want to know that this is a fourth generation descendant of John Bard, the immigrant from Scotland, born 1666 and passed away in 1755. He is the subject of another video in my collection, so please feel free to have a look at that as you may enjoy it. So fourth generation is Barzilla Bard and his wife Mary Bullman. Barzilla was born in New Jersey and is fairly well documented there. And from the page we're looking at, you can see it's telling us his son, just one, was Thomas Bullman Bard. It was very traditional in this family, and a popular custom at the time, to pass along maternal surnames and names of specific people of honor as middle names and occasionally given names. This page also identifies only one child of this couple, leaving room to question if there was others. And there probably were. However, the easiest to trace, and likely the eldest son, who would have shown foremost on property records and inherited the most, was Thomas Bullman Bard, namesake to both his parents and heir. So is it probable he had siblings? Yes, absolutely. Moving along, you'll see that Thomas Bullman Bard moved into North Carolina. He married Mary Smith, and the couple removed to Kentucky circa 1800. Again, we see only one child named for this couple, Barzilla Adams Bard. Barzilla Adams Bard is named for his grandfather, Barzilla Bard. You'll want to note that the name Barzilla is featured among many descendants of this family, so it is a unique point to help make connections. The last major hint here on this page is the note provided for Barzilla Bard. It states that Barzilla was a shoemaker, and that he paid for a substitute during the Revolutionary War. That substitute was his apprentice, a young man known as Parker. At the moment, we're still researching to see if Parker had any relation to the family. Would it have been helpful to have Parker's certified record of service better identified than just a mere mention? Yes, absolutely. It would also have been helpful to indicate who and what relation Mrs. Belch of Chicago had to the Bards or to Parker. From the same book, we're now looking at page 179. You can also see we're in the section for the Scotch Bards and looking at the fifth generation. Again, we see just one child listed. So that one child of Thomas Bullman Bard and Mary Smith is Barzilla Adams Bard. This page names both of Barzilla's wives. So again, there is room left for additional children, but none are indicated. Now, same book, page 184, we can view the sixth generation. We see Barzilla Adams Bard shown with both his first and second wives and the children produced from each marriage. You can note within the children listed for the second wife that there are six missing children with no records yet found, four boys and two girls. At this point, we're into the 1800s in Kentucky. Wars are raging, we have fires and flooding and other extreme bouts of weather that could easily destroy buildings and erase original documents. 
commonly leaving us floundering with the limited surviving tidbits to connect dots and sometimes hazarding assumptions of relationships. And that can be dangerous, and mistakes can easily be made with the best intentions. So what we're going to make note of here on page 184 are two children specifically of Barzilla Adams Bard. His son, named Parker, a farmer of Carrollton, Kentucky, and his daughter, Mary Elizabeth, who married Jesse Edwards. This is a partial tree I've constructed, showing only persons needed to help prove the additional children of Thomas Bullman Bard and Mary Smith. There are many other children among the sources I've found and connected, but I've eliminated them here to make this simple and easy to follow. At the top, you see Thomas Bullman Bard and his wife, Mary Catherine Smith. Now, many online trees spell Catherine with a C. The reason I used K here was because the one document I found with an indication of her middle name had a K. The record was a census, so that of course is objectionable based on the auditor's talents. Have I personally seen every record for Mary? Absolutely not. Am I using the middle name Catherine because I'd seen it in unsourced public trees? Here I have, yes. Feel free to express what you think about this in the comments below, and please indicate any source documents which may feature her middle name in its entirety. It would be most productive and appreciated. If you do find yourself making an assumption in a family tree, don't be afraid to note that it is an assumption. You need to challenge details in genealogy to ensure accuracy. It's not a competition, it's history, your history, and you want it to be as accurate as possible. So we see five children, Barzilla Adams Bard among them, listed for Thomas Bullman Bard and Mary Catherine Smith. New to the branch, we have Rosa Ann Bard, wife of Jesse E. Smith, Jesse S. Bard, Hester Ann Bard, and Melinda Bard and her husband, Jesse Edwards. Now let me walk you through the sources I've used to ascertain these names and relationships. And again, there are additional descendants, but I'm showing only the handful needed to show the connections to Thomas and Mary. Item number one is a marriage record for Jesse S. Bard and his wife, Margaret Jane Casey. We see that Jesse Edwards signs bond for Jesse S. Smith. This would likely be Jesse Edwards, husband of Melinda Bard. Item number two is paramount. There's two pages of the 1850 census of Grant County, Kentucky. Let's see who's home. In house 210 is Barzilla Edwards, and his wife and children. Barzilla Edwards would be the son of Melinda Bard and Jesse Edwards. In house 213, just three doors down, is Mary K. Bard, widowed, age 71, and her daughter Hester A. Bard. This is Mary Catherine Smith. The census was taken in 1850, a few months after her husband, Thomas Bullman Bard, passed away. It's incredible to see her name here. Next door, at house 214, we have Jesse Edwards, age 60, and his wife, Melinda, and their children. So here's Melinda Bard living directly next door to her aged, widowed mother. And again, right next door, in house 215, is Jesse E. Smith, age 34, and his wife, Rosa A. Bard, and their children. Rosa living beside her sister and her mother. And finally, in the very next house, house 216, is Jesse S. Bard, his wife, Mary J., and their children. You'll want to note a very common error. The birth year given for Jesse is off by 10 years making him 24 when he should be 34. However, his wife, age 30, and the children shown match on all other accounts. 
1850 census is absolutely incredible. Had I just blindly saved this census record to my tree based on the transcript, I'd have missed this gold mine. It's so important to look at who lives next door, and that certainly includes scouting up and down the road. Here they happen to have lived side by side, but oftentimes relatives live on the same street with other neighbors in between them. So don't be afraid to spend time flipping through the census pages. Item three is a marriage record for Melinda Beard and Jesse Edwards. We see on one record that a man, likely a father, brother, or uncle named Thomas signs bond for her. Then we see item number four. It's a note concerning the same union of Melinda Beard and Jesse Edwards with her father giving consent to the marriage. The date is the same, so we have two documents, one with the consent of Melinda's unnamed father and another with a man named Thomas Bard signing bond. It's easy to entertain the idea that Thomas Bard is the unnamed father giving consent. And when all the pieces of the puzzle come into play, we begin to assume that yes, Melinda's father was in fact Thomas Bard. This is more of an educated guess than a blind assumption, and the difference should be noted. Item number five is a spectacular record. We see a marriage record for Rosie Ann Beard and Jesse E. Smith. On the record, we see Jesse S. Bard sign for Rosie Ann. On the same document, on the bottom left, we see an attached note scanned into the document. In this attached note, we see Thomas Bard giving consent for his daughter, Rosie Ann, to marry Jesse E. Smith. And we see a secondary signature of Jesse S. Bard. It's also special to note that on this single document, we see the names Bard and Beard used interchangeably. And as we know, this is often the case concerning this family name. Item number six, we have Jesse S. Bard sign marriage bond for Hester A. Beard and Joseph Stewart. The marriage takes place in 1853, and we know their father Thomas died in 1850. Jesse would then likely be a brother, uncle, or father. And again, as we see when all the pieces of the puzzle are in place, Jesse is Hester's brother. So there we have the documents that serve to make the connections of this family. In addition to other children, census records, vital records, wills, and so forth, this Kentucky branch from Thomas Bullman Bard and Mary Catherine Smith extends beyond what has traditionally been accepted since 1918 with documented proof. Lastly, you can see some of the names highlighted with different colors. You'll see in purple two descendants bearing the family name Barzilla. Barzilla Edwards, son of Melinda Bard and Jesse Edwards, and a little change up, Barzella Bard, also known as Zella Bard, daughter of Jesse S. Bard. You'll see in yellow the name Parker continuing to be honored down the family lines. Parker Bard, son of Barzilla Adams Bard, and William Parker Edwards son of Melinda Bard and Jesse Edwards. In the light red color, you'll see familiar names from the Bard and Beard family's book shown at the beginning of this video. Mary Elizabeth Bard, daughter of Thomas Bullman Bard, and her husband, Jesse Edwards, son of Melinda Bard and Jesse Edwards Sr. It wasn't too uncommon for second cousins to marry in that time period. But we see the family naming traditions carried on yet again with one of their sons named Parker Bard Edwards. You'll also see I included a son for Jesse S. Bard named Thomas Hall Bard. This Thomas is my ancestor. For many years Thomas sat in my tree with the wrong father listed. You see, I loved my Bard line and the history it had. And years back, as a novice researcher, you sometimes tend to think existing data is put out there by people that know better than you do. Don't be afraid to question even the most experienced genealogists and proud family historians. 
just be sure you do it respectfully. New records come forward all the time as the digital world brings us even closer together. The first time I saw the name Jesse Bard listed as the father on a newly discovered death record that finally came online, I could have cried. In fact, I think I did. I thought I'd lost my beloved Bard line that I'd come to know for over 15 years. I never questioned the lack of sources, assuming someone more knowledgeable knew something I did not. They should have sourced what they had added, and I should have known better. To my great fortune, my Thomas Hall Bard had been listed as a son of Thomas Bullman Bard. I had plenty of DNA matches for the Bullman line that it didn't seem to even warrant a second look. I lost nothing and gained Jesse and his wife's Casey line. More DNA matches made sense at that point. But it was a valuable lesson, and I doubt I'd be that lucky again. I hope we can all learn from my mistake. Question everything and everyone. Track down the sources, cite them, and attach them to your work. Rip apart your trees and start again. We've all done this ten times over. This hobby is a labor of love. Happy hunting, my friends.